Yo guys, what the hell is going on? You're watching CSS for Beginners Lesson 41 and in this lesson we're going to talk about block level elements. That's coming up. Wow. Okay, so first of all, just to recap what the box model is. Uh, essentially, the box model controls the spatial properties of all block level elements and those spatial properties are margin, this blue bar here, the padding, the green, the width, the yellow and the height the yellow as well as this border here so those five properties margin padding border width and height they are the properties that the box model governs and it applies to all block level elements and i've not really described or explained what block level elements are so i thought in this lesson that's what we'd go through <laughs> all right ninjas so i'm back here in the code and i've just added some new tags here i've got a couple of divs in fact, we'll do three. I'll just copy and paste that once more. And those divs are given a class of block. And then I've got three span tags as well. And those are all given a class of inline. Okay, so we've got the block styling here for all the block classes. We're giving them a margin of 10 pixels and a padding of 10 pixels, as well as a one pixel border, which is black. Exactly the same styles for the inline classes, which are these span tags here. So. This is already saved, but let's just save it again to make sure. And then just have a look what this looks like in a browser. Okay, so these three here are the div tags and they are block level elements. Okay, so a div tag is a block level element. And you can see that these block level elements, they occupy the whole width of a row, uh, one on top of another, a bit like building blocks. Okay, and that's how block level elements work. They took, take up a whole row, a whole block in the document. So there's many different types of block level elements. Div tags are just one of them. I've got open a list here of all the block level elements. There may be some that have been omitted from this list, but if you do a quick Google search, you can find them all. I'll also provide this link in the, uh, the video description down below. So we can see here the div tag is right there. Other block level elements, the P tag, all the heading tags, uh, list tags, pre, address, block quote, div, etc, etc. Okay, there's quite a lot of them. Um, so that is what the block level elements look like. And if we right click and inspect one of these, we can see the orange is the margin that's being applied. The green is the padding and we've not applied a width and a height, but we can do here down in the, uh, the dev tools, we can say width. 400 pixels, height 200 pixels. And now we can see that these blocks here have been given those width and height properties. So they are block level elements and that is what the box model governs. They can govern the spatial properties of block level elements. I'm just gonna refresh this page to get rid of those changes and it reverts back to this. And then we're gonna take a look at inline elements. These are inline elements. And if you remember from the code, they are span tags. So span tags are an inline element. We've given exactly the same properties to those, a margin of 10 pixels, a padding of 10 pixels and a border. And at first glance, you can look at those and think, well, hang on, yeah, they're given a margin, a border, um, and a padding inside the box. So yeah, they're obeying the, uh, the box model rules as well. Now, yeah, at first glance it looks that way, but if we look under the hood, uh, the first thing we'll see is that they don't occupy a full row. They stack next to each other in line, hence why they're called inline element. Because of this, they don't kind of display any vertical spatial awareness. So yeah, they might get this padding, and yeah, they might get the margin. If we inspect this, we can see the padding in green is 10 pixels all around the element. Uh, the margin is only being applied, if you look at the element, to the left and the right, not to the top and the bottom. And that's because they cannot be controlled via, uh, via the box model properties vertically. Okay, They take up a space in line, not vertically. So horizontally, but not vertically. And to demonstrate this point, I just want to go back to the code. And I'll add a few more span tags. Just copy all those and paste them in a few times. I'll save it and we'll go back to the browser. Open in Chrome. Right, and look at that now. They're all kind of mushed up 
on top of each other. So the display in line, going across, going across until the end. This one's cut off halfway and it carries on down here below and then they go in line, in line again. But this here, this vertical space, this margin is not applying to them. If we inspect the element, you can see the vertical margins nowhere to be seen. The padding that we applied is kind of overlapping onto the line above. So it's not obeying those box model properties as we would like them to. Okay, so how do we get around this? Well, we could change their display type. Okay, so we'll go back to the code. And the way we change a display type is by giving it a display property. So it's just display. And then we can, oops, we can change it into a block level element by supplying the value of block. So if we save this again and view it in a browser, let's open with Chrome. And now they're displaying exactly the same as those div tags above. They're all block level elements now because we've specified that specifically. But I mean, they're no longer stacking from left to right. And say we want that. Say we want them to stack from left to right. Uh, but we also want them to have those box model properties, the margin and the padding, so they don't mush up on, onto each other. Well, we can do that as well. And we'll minimize this and go back here. And the way we do it is by giving them inline properties as well as block level properties. And we do this by specifying a value of inline dash block. So that there, my friends, is saying, okay, the display type for this is inline block. Give me all the inline uh, positive attributes that inline elements have and all the positive attributes that block level elements have and merge them together. And let's see what this does for us. All right, cool, there we go. So now they have all the inline properties of stacking left to right like this, but they also obey those margin and padding properties that block level elements do also. So that's great. And this is a really good way we can control things like uh, navigations, user navigations. I'll show you what I mean. Let's jump back to the code and I'm gonna delete all this here. And what I'm going to do is just add in some A links. We won't give them any particular link for now. We'll just do anything. And we'll just call it link like that. And A, oops. And then we'll copy and paste this a few times. Oops. So, say we give all the A tags. We want to style them like buttons, like a navigation. So we'll give them all a padding of 10 pixels. We want a margin of 10 pixels because we don't want them right next to each other. We'll have a background color of, I don't know, um, we'll just say a gray color. You don't need to understand these hex codes. I'll go through that later. Um, and we'll give them a border, one pixel solid and a slightly darker gray like that. Um, we'll give them a text color of black and we'll take away the underline by specifying a text decoration of none and we'll save that so first of all an a tag is an inline element so by default it's not going to show those block level properties it's not going to obey those padding and margin properties okay so let's just see what this looks like in a browser in fact let's just um to demonstrate this inline thing, first of all, we'll just double the links and we'll right click, open in a browser. Okay, they look fine there. And this is the reason I tried to add a lot of links. So let's just double this again, like that. And view once more. So when they have the display type of inline, which is by default, they look like this, which is pretty cack, yeah? But we can change this to inline block, display, inline block. And it should now look fine. Perfect. And I know you're not gonna have this many links in your navigation, your top level navigation most of the time. Uh, that looks a bit silly, but 
I mean, when you start working with other content underneath the links, it's going to be greatly beneficial to you to use something like this. Okay, and the good thing about display inline block is that these days it's widely supported by browsers. Uh, in days gone by, we used to have to kind of fudge this a little bit so that it was supported in different browsers. But now, um, if we take a look at this website, this is kind of use.com. Um, great website to kind of see whether you can use certain CSS properties uh, within modern browsers and how far they go back to old browsers. Anyway, I'll talk more about kind of browser uh, support in later videos, but for now I just want to show you that you can see here that IE, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, all these different browsers, green, it means it's supported. So that's brilliant. So yeah, go away, practice with these, have fun. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to throw a comment down below. Otherwise, uh, please subscribe, share or like these videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one.